gold. You what? I found gold. I found it in the parking lot on my way to school today. Let's sell it and go to Disney World. Are you sure it's gold? Yeah, look, it's shiny like gold. Well, how can we test to see if it's gold? Um, maybe we can run some tests on it? Yeah, so let's make sure before we try and sell it so we don't get our hopes up. So then maybe we can go to Disney World. So let's figure it out. So that brings us to our question of the day, which is, how are minerals identified? And so, we're going to figure out if that's actually gold or if it's something else and by its properties. So, I want you all to give me a thumbs up if you think there's a difference between a rock and a mineral, or a thumbs down if you think there's no difference between a rock, a rock and a mineral. Let's see. One, two, three. Okay, so I see some mixed hand signals, so maybe we'll figure that out. So actually, a rock is a naturally occurring solid made up of many minerals. So there is a difference between a rock and a mineral. So to figure out if we have real gold or not, there are some mineral requirements that we need to meet in order to have a, this mineral. So, first it has, to be, it has to be naturally occurring. Can anyone tell me what natural means? Nature made it. So nature made it. Very good, Mary Kay. So it has to be naturally occurring. That's the first requirement. The second requirement, it has to have a specific formula. Does anyone know what that means? Edward, can you tell me what that means? It has to be made a certain uh, structure. Oh, so it has to be made a certain way. And how do scientists figure out what it's made out of? We use something called the periodic table. And so the periodic table has all these elements, and that's what these minerals are made out of. So, like water. Every water molecule has two hydrogens for every oxygen. So its chemical formula is H2O. The third criteria to meet for it to be a mineral is it needs to have a crystalline structure. Who thinks they've seen a crystal before? That's awesome. I love crystals. Well, when you look into a microscope and on a crystal, you can see that it has a specific repeating pattern. And so it has, for it to have a crystalline structure, you need to have a repeating 3D pattern. So what is the pattern in this molecule right here? Triangle. Triangle. Triangles, right, and it's 3D, and it's repeating all throughout the molecule. So that's what it means. The fourth criteria is it needs to be inorganic. Raise your hand if you know what inorganic means. Yes, Edward. It does not have life. Right, it means that it's something that is not alive and it has never been alive in the past. What are some inorganic things you see around the classroom? My chair. Your chair? The table. That's good. The table, right? Because these weren't these aren't alive right now and they were never alive. So now that we know the four criteria to finding a mineral. We're going to try and identify a common mineral that we find in the Earth's crust. So you guys are going to be working in groups. I want you to take out the mineral labeled number six. And we're going to figure out what this common mineral is. So the first test that scientists use is color. Raise your hand if you want to give me an idea of what color this mineral is. Yes. Gray. Gray, okay. So to go along with color, scientists use the word transparent, and that means that if you're able to see through it. So if it's transparent, you're, you can see through the mineral. If it's opaque, it means that you cannot see through. So for this one right here, is it transparent or opaque? Okay. Opaque. Nice, good job guys. So now, I want you all to write that down on your worksheet. This is going to be mineral number six. When you've all written that down, we're going to go on to our next test, and that will be luster. And what luster
Luster means is the way a mineral reflects light. So, what's one word that you would say for something that reflects light? Shiny. It's shiny. What are some things you think of when you hear the word shiny? A penny. Diamond. A penny. A diamond. Those are all really good examples. So I have here this paper clip and I also have this piece of paper. If we were looking at luster, which one is shiny? The paper clip. The paper clip, right? Not the paper. So, what we're going to determine is if it is metallic or non-metallic. What do you think metallic is? Shiny or not shiny? Shiny. Right, and it reflects light. That's what shiny is. So, metallic is shiny and reflects light, and non-metallic is it's not shiny and does not reflect light. So what do you think for our mineral number six? Is it metallic or non-metallic? Metallic. Metallic, good. It does shine in the light. So I want everyone to write that down on their piece of paper and use the paper clip as an example. The next test we're gonna do is to determine the hardness of the mineral. And the scale that scientists use is most hardness scale. And it's from one to 10, one being the softest to 10 being the hardest. So what you do is I want you all to take out your tile and place it on your desk. The whole time you're using the tile, it stays on your desk. Remember that. Now that you have your tile on your desk, you know, I want you also to take out the nail and the penny that are in your bag. We're going to use these materials for science only, so make sure you use them for the right purpose. What you're going to do is you're going to compare what your minerals will be scratched with in comparison to Mo's hardness scale, and then you can rate it between 1 and 10. So I'll, let you get, I'll give you a few minutes to do that, and then we'll come back together. Now we're going to move on to our next test, which is streak. So you're going to get your mineral, and leaving the tile on your desk, you're going to brush the mineral over the tile and see what color the streak makes on the tile. And then I want you to write that down on your piece of paper. After you're done with that, we're going to do our next test, which is a mag magnetic test. Does everyone know what magnetic means? No? The metals attract each other. Metals attract each other. So we're going to use this magnet, magnet. and we're going to brush it over the mineral to see if it's magnetic or not. And then I'm going to write, have you write that down on your piece of paper. Now that we've done all our tests, you in your groups, you're going to do this for all of your rocks that you have in your baskets. So once we're done with that, we'll come back together and talk about what you found and figure out what minerals we have. Okay, so now that you've finished all your tests and you've figured out what you think those minerals are, I want you all to come up and this is what you use to determine which one was which. So now I want Mary Kay's group to come up and place their post-its on the name that they think their numbers correspond to. So, come on up. So, what did you get for number one? All of mine. You got all of mine? Okay, so I'll put it up for you. You just tell me where to put it. So, number one is all of mine. Number three? Um, I got Galena. Galena, all right. Does everyone agree? Yes. Good. And three, magnetite is four, magnetite is four, graphite is six, okay, uh, seven was the yellow one, sulfur, sulfur, okay, eight was pyrite, pyrite, nine was 
chords. Nice chords. Okay, thank you very much. Everyone get the same answers? Yeah. Wow, y'all are great scientists. So, what did you use to come up with these answers? Right, there are similar characteristics between these minerals, so that's why we have to do multiple tests. Because if we just did color or hardness, there are some similarities between some of these, and the scientists wouldn't be able to figure them out. So, good job. So what I have here is a piece of limestone. If y'all didn't know, limestone is what most of Texas and Austin is sitting on. A lot of Texas is made up of limestone underneath. So, also, these pyramids are also made up of limestone. So for limestone, there's a special test scientists can do to see if it is indeed limestone. So what they do is they get some vinegar, or what we're going to do is get some vinegar, and we're going to add it to this limestone, and we're going to see how it reacts. So what scientists do is they add vinegar, or some type of substance like vinegar, and they add it to the limestone, and they see what happens. Can anyone see what's happening? Or hear what's happening? Little bubbles are forming. Little bubbles are forming, that's right. And you can hear them. So, what happens is when the calcite and the acid touch, a chemical reaction takes place. And this is a special test that geologists use. And there are also other special tests that, um, for other minerals that are so, so now that we finished our lesson and you all figured out all the minerals, you do know that the gold that we found that we were going to go to Disney World with is actually pyrite. So although it looks like gold, like I said, some minerals have similar characteristics. You need to do all the tests to figure out if it actually is gold or not. So now we're going to do our show what you know. So this is individual work. And you have five minutes to do it. 